Hiya, welcome back. How are you? And if you're new here, welcome. How are you? Uh, today's going to be a little bit different than my usual videos, so if you haven't been here before, usually I watch videos and I take them far too seriously, but today we're going to be talking about books. I set the goal to read 30 books this year. <laughs> Your girl did not read 30 books this year. Your girl read 11 books out of 30 books this year. It, it's fine. We watched a lot of YouTube. We watched a lot of movies. We kind of dissociated a bit there in the middle. That's okay. What did he say? <laughs> um, but this year for 2021, we're going to try to get back on that reading train, starting with setting my goal for 2021. This year, I'm going to read 26 books because I will be turning 26 this year. Will I accomplish it? Maybe. Maybe not. If you are a fast reader, if you are a person that binge reads books, if you are a person that the only media that you ingest is books, you're going to laugh at me. That's okay. I ingest a lot of media, so sometimes books kind of get to the back burner. Um, and that's okay, because I get to them eventually, but um, this year it has been more video media than book media. A lot of these books that I'm going to be talking about are books that almost everybody has read. The whole point is to get myself back into the reading grind instead of being in the slump that I am. So I want 2021 to be filled with so many beautiful books. I only have 23 books on my TBR because I wanted to leave some room for other books. Um, I wanted to leave some room for books that are coming out this year or maybe books that are going to be recommended to me. I just wanted to leave a little bit of cushion there. I'm going to start with the singles and then I'm going to get into the books that um, are series but I'm just continuing the series and then at the end I will get into me. I'll either be rereading or reading for the first time the full series. So let's go ahead and get into my 2021 TBR. Number one. Lolita. I started reading it two years ago and it has some of the most beautiful writing in it. Yes, the subject matter is controversial. If you're a person that doesn't know what Lolita is, Lolita is about a man who falls in love with an underage woman. It is very controversial and it is not, me reading this does not mean that I approve of the themes in it, but it is so interesting the way that he writes. So this is book number one, 2021. Yes, yes, yes. The next book is Crime and Punishment by Fyodor Dostoevsky. This book is about a man who kills his landlord, I'm pretty sure, and it go you go through his thought process and then you go through his thought, how he thinks after killing. As a person who loves true crime and psychology and all of that, this book is amazing. I have not read it yet, but I know that I'm going to like it. The only reason why I haven't read it is because <sighs> she a little thick. She's one of my books that I, that I need to push myself to read. Very excited to read it. Very excited to get into the mind of a killer and how he descends into madness and um, he becomes crazy and he becomes guilt-ridden and it's beautiful and I love it. So book number three is another single. It is, I think it is the only nonfiction in this entire TBR. Um, I started reading it last year, but I never really got around to it because I just didn't feel like reading it anymore. But hi, cat. Stop messing with my mic. Okay, can I help you? Can I help you? Um, this one is called The Art of Seduction. A lot of people have read it. Again, this is one of those books where, sorry if the, if it's like the light is kind of getting to it, but this is The Art of Seduction. Um, a lot of people have read this book. It is about seduction, but not necessarily just sexual seduction. It is why we are attracted to certain things, and it kind of teaches you the inner workings of people who, kind of like people who con different people, and, and marketing, and um, the psychology behind it all. Um, so I am very interested in this. As a person who is immensely drawn to constantly bettering themselves, but also who doesn't like to be a doormat. This is the perfect book to read, so I'm very excited to read it. It's a little daunting, especially because it has the little things on the side, and I don't want to read this and then have to go read the side things. It just seems like a lot, but I am very excited to read it and learn more. Art of Seduction by 
Robert Greene. Number four, continuing with our um, singles, uh, number four is, and I don't have the physical copy with me, so I'm just going to put up a picture, The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue. I have heard so much about this. Um, I know that when it comes to booktube, you should not just always follow the positive praise train, but toot toot, we're following it. Yes, so The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue is by V.E. Schwab. I love the way she writes. Vicious is one of my favorite books, let's just say that. Um, and I'm and I have another one of her books in the TBR. The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue is about a woman who gets cursed to always be forgotten by everyone she meets um, until... Years later, years, 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 centuries later, um, she finally gets recognized by someone who remembers her name. I don't know too much about this book, I just know the little bit that I read on, little synopsis I read on Google, um, so I didn't want to read too much because I feel like it's kind of like a mystery and I want to be like intrigue. So I'm very excited to read this one. Number five is the Octon it's the Octonomy Fosbit Files prologue. This book has so much mystery about it, um, so much mystery so much like underground hype I, I will be buying it um pretty soon i don't have the physical copy because just because of the pandemic um now with orders um it's going to become pre-order so you can't really get anything right now on it but um yeah i don't know much about it i don't really want to ruin it by reading the synopsis so if you want it um link is down below go and find it and yeah Number six is actually when we start getting into our continuation of series. So, guys, okay. Were you like me? <laughs> I feel like I'm in an info commercial. Were you like me? A, a young girl? A tomboy? One that thought she was too good for anything and everything? Well, look no further because this book has been out for years and we've never read it. Yes, guys. New Moon. <laughs> I just read Twilight last year. I've watched the movies like years ago, but I never got around to reading the books because when I was younger, I thought like, no, I don't read Twilight. I'm cool. Now that I'm 25, about to turn 26, um, I finally read the first Twilight. It's like that trashy, yummy, feel good book. And so now I'm about to get into New Moon. I usually listen to these books, these types of books on audiobook, but it depends on how fast I get through these books, but I might do more than three this year. Um, thank you for inviting me into the fandom, even though I'm years late. So another series I'm going to be continuing this year in 2021 is the Shades of Magic trilogy. Uh, I read A Darker Shade of Magic last year, and now I am reading A Gathering of Shadows. I love V.E. Schwab's writing. Um, I will say this, I didn't completely connect to the characters in A Darker Shade of Magic. So I'm hoping when I read this book, a Gathering of Shadows, I will feel more connected to the characters. I'm a character-driven person, and I'm a, a story-driven person. So the first book had story, but I didn't feel a connection to the characters. So hopefully I can feel a connection to the characters in this book, and then it'll tie them both together. Does that make sense? So if you don't know what um, A Darker Shade of Magic is about, um, in this world, there are different worlds. Have you ever had a dream that that you um you had you 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 could this book there are different worlds there's gray london there's white london there's black london and there's red london as far as i remember black london is like away it's been cut off then there's gray london red london and white london and they all have different sets of magic um gray london has zero magic red london has um, a good chunk of magic and white London is kind of uh, the creepy side of things where they um, can consume magic from other people. So in this book there's Kel who is one of the few who can control all four, all four elements of magic. Does that make sense? I think so. So he can control all the different magics. He also can go between worlds. Not everyone can go between worlds, only the Antari which is the race that Kel is. I'm going to go through this one. I bought this nice one. It has a little thing, but yeah, so we'll see. Um, hopefully I can get through all of it and hopefully I can feel connected to the characters because I felt really sad that I couldn't connect to the characters um, in the last book and I really, really, really want to like the series, but if I can't connect to the characters, then I'm not going to like the series, so yeah. 
And to finish up our continuing series, the next one, I don't have the book, or I think I do, maybe I lent it, but it's Thunderhead from the Scythe series. Um, oh, an arc of the Scythe series. I'm sorry. Um, I read the first one. I liked it. The pacing was weird. Um, I'm not going to go too into it because I don't, if you guys want to review, let me know, or how I felt about it, let me know, but the pacing was like, kind of weird in the book, and I didn't feel like exceptionally drawn to the characters, but the concept, and the world, and the story is a very interesting one that I love so much. Basically, if you don't know what Ark of a Scythe is, um, in the first book, Scythe, it kind of tells you that in this world, nobody dies. They've cured death. No more. No, no more death. No, no, no. In order to keep the population um, under control, there are these people called scythes, and they're the ones that can deem who is worthy or not to die, um, and how many people need to die in order to keep the population under control. So these two kids, these two, this boy and this girl, get taken under the wing to become a scythe. Um, and so you kind of follow them and their reaction to the world and becoming scythes. I'm actually really excited to read the next book. Uh, not that I'm not excited to read A Gathering of Shadows, but like, I'm not like, it's something that I'm just like, oh, okay, let's read it. Like, let me get into it as opposed to like, I could just pick up and read it. For the next books, we're going into series. So series that I'm either starting or rereading. The first books, you can kind of see it up front. I feel like everyone has read these books. The Throne of Glass series. Yes, 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 here it is. Um, I never read the Throne of Glass series. I didn't even hear about it until two, like a year and a half ago. It's about this assassin named Selena who, um who has been captured, and in order to gain her freedom, she has to win a, basically a fight to the death against other thieves, assassins, ruffians. The play. No. Yes. I have already started this one, Throne of Glass. This is the one that I'm currently reading, obviously. Uh, Crown of Midnight is the second one, and I hope to be reading both of them this year. Honestly, there's 12 books in the series, so there's a fat chance that I might just read these books for a chunk of the TBR, but we'll see. We'll see. I'm a mood reader, so we'll see how it goes. Alrighty, the next series is going to be a reread. I hadn't read Throne of Glass, but I've read these books. Yes, if you can see the edge of them, you know what I'm talking about. A Court of Thorns and Roses trilogy. I, these books are one of those books that I started reading that I was like, oh, I don't know if I like it. And then the, the week after I finished reading the trilogy, because I read them back to back to back, I was like, oh my gosh, I'm obsessed with the characters. I don't know why it took me so long to like, I, it was like a big delay, but afterwards I was like, oh, I'm obsessed. What's up, dude? Hey, I am trash for them. I know a bunch of girls are trash for them. I know that they're YA trash. You don't have to tell me that. I am YA trash. This book, if you don't know what A Court of Thorns and Roses is, it is about Feyre who kills a fae and in order to pay off her debt instead of dying, she's taken to the land of the fae to live with them in order to pay off her penance. Um, I love these books. I... I'm trash for them all, and I love them, so. Wow. So the next series I'm going to be reading is one that I've wanted to read for forever, but I never got around to buying the book. The next series is The Diviners by Libba Bray. Okay, so if you like the 1920s, if you like supernatural things, if you like a spunky female protagonist and very attractive men, because everyone's attractive in The Diviners to me, I don't know why, but if you like all of those themes, and you don't know what this is about, go to Goodreads. I will have everything linked below, all of the books linked below. That is the next on my list. I will read the entire series. I'm so ready. Yeah, Curse of Dark and Lonely. I've heard some things about it. Um, I don't know if I like it. It's a, it's a retelling of Beauty and the Beast. I don't want to go too into the details of the synopsis because, again, I haven't read it. When it comes to retelling, since you already know the base story, you don't want to know too much about the synopsis before you get into it. Um, or else it's just going to ruin, you're just going to know too much about it on both ends. So I'm going to go into it blind and we'll see if I like it. It has mixed reviews. Some people think it's like super boring. They don't like it. Other people think it's wonderful. So we'll see. We'll see. Hmm. It's like, so the next books are another ones that everybody has read, but every time I read them, I don't know why I just am never in the mood to read them. 
never in the mood to read them. Every time I start to read it, I'm like, ooh, this is going to be so delicious. And then I start reading it and I'm like, no, it's okay. I want something different. Six of Crows and Crooked Kingdom duology. I know that I'm going to love these books. It's one of those books that I know I'm going to love. I just never get in the mood to read them. I don't know why. The Six of Crows is about a group of thieves and bandits and very, very smart, wise trickster people, and they have to go. It's basically a heist book set in magical fantasy kingdom land. We love it. We stand it. We are hyped for it. Um, Yeah, so these books, they're not super big books. I just have never been in the mood. I'm a mood reader. It's the curse of the mood reader. Harry Potter and the curse of the mood reader. I am my own horcrux. I hate myself. <laughs> Speaking of Lee Bardugo, we have another book on this list from her. From the Alex Stern, I don't know if it's going to be a trilogy, but from, Ale from the Alex Stern universe, it is called Ninth House. I don't have the physical copy. Here's the cover. You all... Like, a bunch of the booktube community knows what Ninth House is because everyone was super hyped for it when it came out. So the Ninth House is, like, a culty, it's boarding schooly, it is female protagonist-y, it is creepy-y and mystery-y all into one book. So it's one of those books that I can tell that I'm going to really like um, just because of the subject matter and I'm very excited but I don't want to spoil anything for me or I don't want to read the synopsis and know a little too much if that makes sense. The next book is one that almost everybody know everybody knows about like let's be honest um, I only have the physical copy of one book and because I let my roommate borrow the other physical copy I only have the sleeve of the other. It is the Folk of the Air. I know that this looks really pathetic but it's only the sleeve. Um, it's the Folk of the Air trilogy um, but I'm only going to be reading two books out of it this year. If I get to the third book, if I finish the second book and I'm like oh I have to read the third book then we shall see but I read The Cruel Prince when it first came out and then I just never got around to reading The Wicked King. I just never got around to it. So the reason why I put these at the end is because I'm going to reread The Cruel Prince because it's been a while since I've read it and then I'll go straight into The Wicked King. It's about a girl named Jude and her sisters who were taken to the world of the Fae when their parents were killed very young. But the story revolves mainly around Jude and it's about how she has adjusted to the world of the Fae and about a prince named Cardin. Um, it's about his, her, their relationship together and how there are a bunch of different politics, fey politics, there's a bunch of different conspiracies and scandals and all of that. So I'm not a big world building person, but I liked the world of it. And I'm very interested to see how things fey in The Wicked King. If I hate The Wicked King, I'll probably stop, but hopefully I like The Wicked King as well. So. The last book on this list is Harpy War by R.F. Kuang. I'm sorry if I butchered the last name of this um, author, but hopefully I didn't. So I don't know too much about the Poppy War. Um, it is about a girl named Rin who aces the academic test to get into this very elite military school. And there are gods, there are shamans, there is magic, there's representation of color and race, and there is different, I know that there are different themes in this, um, in this book, and I'm very excited to see a character that is diverse and to get into the world. I know it goes into Chinese history, uh, modern Chinese history. I know it goes into certain gods and magic systems and all of that. R.F. Kuang, I've heard her get a bunch of praise for this book, and so I'm just, I'm excited to read it. I'm excited to read something different. It kind of seems like it's going to be a breath of fresh air amongst all the other books that I'm going to be reading this year. So, that is my 2021 TBR comment down below. Let me know if you're reading any of the same books. Let me know what you're reading this year. Let me know if you're reading this year. I don't always post book videos, but if you like these videos, I will post more. I will film more. I will do book games. I will do book reviews. I will read random books that you guys want me to read. I'm just, I'm excited. I love books and I'm just excited to be on YouTube posting about something that I like and hopefully gaining a community that also likes these things. With all that being said, you have a very literary week, and I will see you next time. Alright, love you guys. Bye. Toot toot!